Hey love, so welcome back to my channel. Welcome if this is your first time here. My name is Day and if you like these types of videos, go ahead and subscribe and join the lovely family. My pen. Join the lovely family. I would love to have you here. And for those of you who have been here, thank you guys so much for coming back to see me once again. So in today's video, we are going to be speaking about my femininity journey. It is something that I feel like a lot of people um, mention. And I just want to give you guys some advice uh, for those of you who are interested in this. I want to say before we even start, by no means am I saying this is the way of life. This is the right way to do things. No, this is just what I do and what I feel like has caused a lot of my growth over time. So if you're interested in this type of content, please continue to watch, enjoy, comment down below and engage. And let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so it's been a while since I did like a sit down video like this that was not really about like hair um so i did take some notes i'm gonna be like just just looking down in my notes i want to leave too much up for interpretation i know femininity can be a very sticky topic oh my gosh it really is and there's so many different like opinions about femininity what it means so like living your feminine energy and i'm really not going that deep into it I'm just really going into like self-improvement, what I felt like helped me um, just become a better woman and overall just a more mature woman. I'm 29 years old. I am a mom. I have three kids. I'm a wife. And I have had to myself make a lot of transitions um, just to grow up a little bit and to just be like real and honest with myself and not really act or look like... Um, you know, a child, if if I'm just being direct, um, that's just what I wanted to do. Not saying you have to do that. That's just what I wanted to do. I have some tips on like external and internal things. Um, and overall, I just have 10 tips for you guys. I'm going to start with the outer because I feel like when people comment on like femininity on social media, that's typically where they're commenting on because you don't really know me personally. Um, so you really can't say like, you know, you really can't comment on how I've grown or like what feminine energy I put out in person. Um, so I want to comment on the outer first because that's usually what people are focused on. My first tip is to make your hygiene a priority. I feel like I want to be specific about that because I feel like that's something people say all the time, like hygiene, hygiene routine, develop your hygiene routine. And sometimes if you have not developed a hygiene routine yet, you kind of think hygiene is just like, making sure you're clean, making sure you don't smell bad, and that's it. And and to me, what I've realized is hygiene goes like way over beyond just like getting cleaned up, taking a shower. Like that is the bare minimum, okay? That is the bare minimum. Making sure you have your hygiene products, like your deodorant, getting clean, like having your soap and stuff. That is like at the, that is, that's the requirement. That's not like a hygiene routine. Um, and for me, I felt like my femininity increased when I took my hygiene routine to the next level, which means I didn't just do stuff that I just had to do, like just get cleaned up, put on lotion. Like those are basic things, but more so like really taking the time to figure out how can I get products that work better for my skin, facial routine, morning, midday and night. What am I doing? Shower routine, shower routine in the morning, shower routine at night, shower routine on the weekends. Everything is different. Sometimes the products vary based on that. Um, the products may vary based on the time of year. How your shower routine um, takes place in the summer is probably going to be a little bit different from how your shower routine takes place in the winter. Stuff like that. When I realized I was paying more attention to detail and trying to really build a shower routine that I enjoyed, as opposed to like, oh, let me just hurry up and get in the shower. Like, no. When you when you make it an overall experience, like a luxury experience that you enjoy. I'm telling you, part of hygiene as well is to not, I feel like the, the older you get, the really, I, I, this is key, not waiting until stuff needs to be done to do it in terms of your hygiene. So if you know that, for example, you get your eyebrows done, okay? You know, typically when you get your eyebrows done, it lasts maybe like two to three weeks. Do not wait until week three to get your eyebrows done again. You know what I mean? Like anticipate the need for things to like grow out, need to be done so that it looks like you're not without things needing to be done. Like before it even happens, you're getting it done. Before your nails even grow out and look rough and start chipping and stuff, you are already in your next appointment, okay? So for example, I again, 
my nails can last probably about three weeks okay if i really wanted to stretch it am i gonna wait until week three until they're looking grown out and dull and maybe chipping no i'm gonna do it at week two okay before it gets to that point so that way it just always looks like my nails are always fresh um, my eyebrows are always fresh the same with shaving don't wait until your hair is fully grown out to take care of it. If you're into that, I am. Um, don't wait. Just don't wait. Like, anticipate the need. Don't wait until your hair looks a mess to do your hair, okay? Like, <laughs> anticipate the need that it will happen. You already know in your mind when you get something done how much longer you have to get it done again. Um, and if you can't get it done professionally, do it yourself. So, that is that. In addition to that, I would say not rushing to get ready. Oh, that is something that I, I feel like I had to get delivered from that one, okay? Like, I feel like when you're young and life is just moving and you just going, going, going all the time, you jumping in the house, you getting off work, you got somewhere to go, you got an event you want to go to, you want to go out, you just jumping in the shower, throwing on your makeup, doing your hair. It is just, sometimes you look like you rushed, you know what I mean? And really being in that feminine space where you're like taking your time, you're prepared, you prioritize your time, you know, okay, in order for me to have enough time to get ready, I need um, an hour and a half to two hours. And I need to like put that in my mindset before I make these plans. So I know that in advance so you don't have to rush. Not saying like, you know, things happen sometimes where you do have to rush, but you shouldn't be rushing to get ready constantly. You shouldn't be rushing to get ready in the morning before work because you know yourself and you know how long it takes you to get ready. Um, that's, that's something I had to really learn the hard way. And I feel like when I gave myself the time, I enjoyed getting ready. I enjoyed doing my hair and makeup and stuff like that. I enjoyed getting dressed um, because I was not like rushing constantly. And that affects your mental health too. Next but. thing. Invest in age-appropriate items. That means clothing, makeup, just your choices. Like, I know that a lot of people debate that you can wear anything you want in any age group, and that is 100% true, okay? You can wear whatever you want. Like, nobody's stopping you. However, if we're honest with ourselves, some things are not as flattering at this age as they were when you were a teenager, okay? Some of the outfits I wore when I was 19 years old are not as flattering on me at age 29. You know what I mean? Um, that doesn't mean I can't wear them. I can wear what I want to. But is it what's going to look the best? Probably not. <laughs> so um, I feel like at any age, you can be like sexy. You can, you know, take risks. Um, but just make sure that it is in align with what your goals are, like how you want to present yourself to be. And make sure it looks nice with your body type. Like everything's not for everybody. You got to figure out what works for you and go with that same with makeup like i realized that certain things that i wore like when i was a little bit younger it's just not for me anymore and it's okay to let certain styles go it's okay to say you know what during that time that was it like i was doing my thing that's just not really my style anymore though um i noticed that with a lot of colors that i used to wear it's just I would try to hold on to it or bring it back out every now and then and it just wasn't fitting like the vibe it just wasn't for me anymore it has aged and that is fine um i just had to like figure out what works for me especially after having kids like that's something that i really really was focusing on certain stuff like my body has changed my weight has changed um and i have found things that look really really nice for me now for example high-waisted trousers high-waisted pants like a dress pants Oh my gosh, I don't care what day it is. They look so nice on me. I can wear them to work. I can wear them relaxing. I can dress them up. Like the, the high waist really looks good on me um, in terms of like cinching my waist and ac accentuating things like my hips that I may not have had before. Like, you know, be willing to change and to adjust and to know what looks nice on you and to be able to like let some things go in your closet style wise all of that and just understanding that there is a time and a place for every look again i'm not saying because you're older now you can't wear a crop top i, I love crop tops however i do understand that there's a time and a place for it if i'm out with the girls you know hey whatever um but if i'm going to lunch with my in-laws you probably <laughs> should choose something a little bit more appropriate for the environment same with work a lot of people feel like i am um overdressed for work i'm a teacher a lot of people feel like i overdress for work but for me personally i just i feel like for that environment um a professional environment calls for a different look there's just certain stuff i i would not wear even on like dress down day or jean day when it comes to like physical looks since we're on that topic 
I try to be intentional about what is done to my body. Um, and what I mean by that is when, when you were young or when I was young, I was able to um, eat different things and it wouldn't affect me. Um, now I eat not because I want to keep my weight down. Yes, that is a plus. But just in general, like as a woman, you have to take care of your body. You have to take care of what goes in your body. That's what reflects on the outside. If you would have told me 10 years ago that I was not going to eat hot Cheetos anymore, hot fries, all of those things that I just love to eat, I probably would have told you like, you're crazy. Like I'm eating these things for the rest of my life. But no, like honestly, what you put in is what comes out. Like your skin looks different. Like you ever realize like you go through a stage of just eating terribly. Your skin looks dull. Your hair looks dull. You just don't look like you, you have like poured into yourself. When you're eating healthy, when you're kind of taking care of yourself, when you're making sure you're getting your exercise in, which is what has been another hard thing for me. But when you're doing that, you feel better. You feel better. You look better. You just don't look as beat down. And you can kind of really tell when people are not taking the time to um, take care of their bodies. We all go through it. I can look back at pictures, especially after having my kids, where I just, I just really, it just wasn't there. Like, I really didn't have it in me to care. And it looked like that. So when you take care of yourself from the inside, it really does reflect on the outside. A part of that does um, come with just giving yourself an extra push. I know that a lot of people claim they don't have time to work out. I was one of those people. That is a lie, okay? Like, it really is. Like, it really is just laziness. And once you're able to kind of, like, buckle down and confront that aspect, I think you'll be able to get through it. Working out is hard. Sometimes it's not fun for everybody. It's not fun for me. But I had to realize, okay, um, it's still possible, one, to it's essential and actually living a long life it's not just like a like this trivial thing like those who work out those who don't like no like everyone needs to work out it's definitely something that you need to make a priority i have to make it a priority get out and run find things that like you feel like are beneficial for you like there's so much nowadays if you are not a running lifting weights type which i am not go online um there is this girl on youtube she's very popular her name is grow with joe my friend put me onto her and she makes like working out fun work out in your house you have kids you don't have a babysitter work out right in your house okay the kids will join in trust me my next tip is to show up looking your best even when you don't have anyone to impress um i used to tell my high schoolers this all the time because they would just and when you're young i feel like sometimes you go through this phase um, you're just like, I don't have anybody to impress there. I don't, you know, I don't like anybody there. I can just, I could wear whatever. It's not a big deal. It is not about that. It is not about that. You showing up looking your best self really shows and reflects how you care about yourself. It reflects like what you think about yourself. Like I took the time to take care of myself this morning. I took the time to really take care of my body. And this, how I look is how I feel. You know what I mean? And um, a lot of times you'll realize in those moments is when you'll run into somebody that you actually do want to impress, okay? Um, especially, you know, for my single girls. It be the moment that you are not really looking for a, a significant other, a man, whatever, that you'll see one, okay? So <laughs> not saying that that's, that should be on your mind, but just in general, like, don't get dressed up for other people. Don't just get dressed up when you have an event to go to when pictures are going to be taken or whatever. Um, you know, there's some people that on the weekends you look great and then at work, you just don't want anything. You look like anything. You took no time to get ready. That is not how we want to live our life. If you are interested in living the same life I live, <laughs> no. And um, yeah, that's just something that I feel like <laughs> it's funny to me because there's really a huge difference. Like you go on people's Instagrams, you see them looking like, wow, you look so nice. And you pull up to their job and you're like, what is going <laughs> what what is going on your hair's not done you, you're just barely making it like no like try to make that also a part of your daily routine like you want it to be like this is just how i am um <laughs> not just like there was a special occasion and i got cute for it don't be intimidated by being overdone like sometimes i experience that where i can feel uncomfortable again i'm a teacher teachers are different every teacher is different especially in this day and age you know some teachers really really believe in relaxing and being comfortable at work and that is okay but that is not me 
um and so a lot of times people will give the whole like, why are you so dressed up and don't take all that and why do you look like this all the time it doesn't you know why 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 you know what i mean and it's just like at the end they had to to respond and say that's just how i am like that's this is how i am i dress like this because that's what's in my wardrobe um that's just the type of girl i am okay yes i'm gonna put on a heel every now and then it doesn't matter that um you know i'm at this place i'm at that place obviously make sure it's an appropriate heel a professional heel uh but yeah like it that's just how i am I, you don't really have to i used to get so uncomfortable like when people say that like oh am i doing too much no that's how you are like you don't set your standards based on those around you set your standard for yourself other people you know they have their own standards but you don't have to adjust based on other people and what they will think and my last tip for the outer appearance is to try to stay up to date on your makeup your hair your nail trends and routines um obviously everything doesn't have to be trendy you can definitely go for a classic style but over time things change like your makeup will change what is um acceptable for your makeup changes like if you think about how we do our makeup now versus like how we did it back in what 2010 okay 13 year difference makeup has changed so be willing to definitely learn like new things so many people like get their makeup routine and then they don't change it for years and it ages it ages your face you know what i mean so just try your best to like obviously not jump on every trend but just kind of stay on top of things um pick somebody professional that you really like and go for their style i do it all the time um i don't constantly watch makeup tutorials but every now and then i kind of like to see What's out there? What can I change? How can I make this look a little bit better, a little bit softer, a little bit neater, um, as opposed to just sticking with the same thing over and over and over again? Okay. That's it for the outside. Let's get into the inside. Um, the inside, I feel like, is really what reflects your femininity. Um, honestly, you can look great. You really can. But if you really have not worked on your inner self, it really is in vain, I feel like. And um, I have learned a lot over the past few years about just being more feminine. Um, and one of the top things that I have decided to do is not debating, arguing, bickering in any level in any level in my life that is with my spouse i do not argue with my husband that doesn't mean we don't disagree but it's never gonna be me arguing fussing cussing him out no no absolutely not that is not the life i live no we can disagree we'll revisit the topic later if it's getting too intense you know what this is not really the space i want to be in we can revisit the topic later same with friends i don't understand this like arguing with your friends and cussing each other out and going on social media and just just it's it's a lot of negative energy and when you put all that stuff out there you really take on a lot of it yourself like you just weigh so heavy it, it can be viewed on you like how heavy like it looks on you you look stressed you look overwhelmed um and it's just it, who has time for it <laughs> who has time for it we don't have many days okay we don't have many days we gotta we gotta stop with the like overly like debating and stuff and when i say we I'm, I'm talking to myself because i remember times when i would do that but when you're debating with people nine times out of ten you're really not changing anybody's mind okay you're not and you have to transition to not necessarily like how can i prove that i'm right all the time but more so okay how can we being you know that we care about each other or just in general how can we um disagree and still respect each other how can how can i disagree with you but still respect what your triggers are still not disrespect you still not disrespect your family your beliefs how can we kind of like come to that common ground as opposed to like just the arguing i just there's just no way there's absolutely no way not doing it and for those that that may not be mature enough to get to that point you really don't need them in your life again that negativity just weighs on you. You got to get it out. You really do. The next thing I would say is to take control as much as you can over your circumstances. Life is hard. Life really is just like, ugh, sometimes it just throws stuff at you that it's just like, man, okay. <laughs> like, but um, as much as you can, as much as you can control what you can control. You can't control everything, but some stuff, you in a situation and you can think of a plan and it may take a little bit of work, hard work, but you can take control over it. And I mean, um, like financially, I mean, emotionally, I mean, in relationships, like allow yourself to be stress free through planning. For example, let's take financially, for instance, 
yes you can be upset about the curveballs that life has thrown you okay like it's hard it really is especially in this economy but instead of moping and being sad and letting things like overwhelm you and consume you when i say consume i mean you get to that point where you're just hopeless try to think of a plan okay yeah my nine to five or my my day-to-day -day job is not cutting it what's the five-year plan because i'm not i'm obviously not going to do this forever okay and i have been there like what's the plan i'm not i'm not going to and again i'm a teacher you guys know obviously i'm not amongst the wealthy however i thought to myself okay i'm a teacher i have three kids what other ways can i bring in income I'm going to think of it. I'm going to get it done. Okay. And, and again, if this is not enough, what plan can I do in five years so that I can transition careers? So you're constantly like, I'm going to do what I can. I'm not just going to take what life, you know, gives to me and just, you know, be stressed and just live my life like that. No, like I'll, I'll fight. I'm going to do what I can until I can't do anything else. And then just kind of being grateful for what it is that you already have in that moment. Like, yeah, this is not everything. This is not the end for me, but I'm very thankful that things are not what they could be. I'm very thankful that things are not worse. I'm very thankful that I don't live the reality that some people live. Being grateful for the people in your life, you know what I mean? Like, we have all lost people, um, and it hurts, and it, it, you know, life is just hard. I really can't say that enough, but being grateful that you have the people that you still have um and understanding that also money can't buy everything it really can't take control over your environment as well uh, this goes with being grateful and appreciative you may not have your dream house but you do have your first home you do have your first apartment you even have the space maybe that your parents gave you be grateful by taking care of that space make that space a home okay please don't have your space just like dirty junky because it's not what you you know it's not your dream place anyway you know what i mean like that's not <laughs> it's not your dream car so you're not going to take care of it no like what you do have take care of it until you get the next blessing what you do have you know show god that you're grateful for that and then when you have your next blessing okay even more so when you have that pay increase even more so i'm gonna know what to do with it because i already budgeted when i didn't have as much lastly prioritize your mental health who honey you can be as cute as you want to be. It's not going to matter if you're having a mental breakdown, okay? Like, you know when you're getting to that point, all right? Um, and that's why, for me personally, even though I could, you know, work, work, work hard, quality of life is so important to me. It's also the reason why I'm still in my career. I love not having to work super intense hours. That's just what works for me. Some people don't mind it. And if, if you really enjoy your job and you can work all night, great. You got to know your limits, though. That's not my, <laughs> that's just not what I like to do. So just understand like what is getting me to a, a low point, a negative point? How can I stop myself before I get there? I've, I've become a lot better at that recently. And I feel like it shows when people say like, you, you just, you just seem happy. You just seem like a positive person. Yeah, because I put things in place in my life so that I'm not getting like stressed out. I know when it's coming. I know certain stuff is going to take me there. So how can I pull myself back so I'm not getting to that point? So yeah, those are my tips. Thank you guys so much. Um, let me know what your thoughts are, what you do to increase your femininity. If you're on a femininity journey, I feel like it is a lifelong journey for me. And also because I have daughters, it is just going to be my lifelong goal. But let me know what you all think. Drop your comments down below. I appreciate you guys. Let me know what tip resonated with you the most. And I will see you guys in my next video.